he, he really gets mad because he cannot eat at once. He wants to eat at once. He's impatient. And then after that, uh, Coke will be spilling, soft drinks are on the floor. Kind of embarrassing. So my husband said, okay, pack everything and we have to go home. Uh, we don't want to cause any more trouble outside. Through the program at Bridge Learning, Justin has made significant improvements. Now he's able to hold his own among his peers in primary school. Uh, Justin now is in primary one. And um, actually I had a fear since October that he won't be able to make it. Uh, my, everybody says, um, just trust Justin. Everybody here in Bridge Learning tells the same thing. Trust Justin, he will do it. Um, I didn't tell the teachers and the vice principal um, in, initially. I just don't want them to uh, um, look at Justin as a special child at the beginning. It's like I want them to see Justin as he is. I waited for at least a week. Then I spoke to them, asked them, uh, I tell them that my son is a special kid and I just want to know how he's behaving in school. And both the teacher says, there's nothing wrong with Justin. All my worries are gone, everything is good. Every time I talk about Justin, I always cry. But that before it's worries, now it's really, I'm really happy. Through the concerted efforts of a team, Arena's vision continues to take flight. Bridge Learning now looks to expand further. This is a far cry from the rough time Arena experienced when Bridge Learning was just a fledgling enterprise. So how did it feel when you first started out? Mm, I had a lot of fears and doubts mm -hmm. about myself and actually the greatest enemy is yourself about whether I could actually go on to bring about the great vision to fulfillment. What are some of the challenges that she faced? Many, many challenges. Uh, one, one of them that I can think of uh, was when she had major financial shortage. She had difficulty balancing, paying off salary to her staff, paying for the rent of a place. She had major financial difficulty. I remember those times when she had to really press in and believe for the business to come in and to believe that uh, the business is viable and just to hang in there, to keep on pressing in. I remember those times when, she, when we prayed together and I asked her, hey, just hang in there and believe what God has called you to do. You know, as you go along, you just tell yourself, you have only one option, and the only option is to succeed. Because my staff are dependent on me, and I similarly I'm dependent on them, and because they believe together with me, it is my responsibility to do my best. And what about the uh, children who comes to Bridge Learning for intervention and help, and the parents who trust us, and you know, the thousands and maybe the millions of children and, and people out there who are waiting for our expertise and our skills and our help. You know, initially, it's, it's a lot to do with yourself, your inner struggles, yes. You know, people always ask, so you're social entrepreneur, you know, how much of your profits go to, you know. It comes with the different stages of development and growth. Initially, you need to have more business focus because you really need to bring in the profits in order to actually channel to your social mission. As you move along, you tend to increase in your social mission. And then as you, if you have become like um, prosperous and successful and all that, then your social mission will exceed your business focus. Yes, it's not a matter of what is right and right is wrong, it's a matter of growth. Through the years, Arena has become more passionate about social entrepreneurship. She has even taken on speaking engagements to raise awareness of the concept. Though she was not comfortable with the increased attention at first, she has grown more and more at ease with the added responsibility of a higher profile. Right now when I look at Arena, she is no longer the reserved introvert that I knew 10 years ago. She has blossomed, blossomed to, to a, a woman of stature, a woman of confidence, and right now, I would say that she's definitely wiser, much wiser than before, more confident in what she can contribute to society, and definitely I would say that she has, she has grown in terms of even handling uh, pressure and stress in her life. Definitely, she has improved a lot. When Arena started her business venture five years ago, 
She was struggling to chart the unfamiliar world of social entrepreneurship. It was a lonely process, one she felt that no one else could understand. That was until she met a group of like-minded people who wanted to save the world as badly as she did. When the social entrepreneurs get together, there is just this passionate electrifying atmosphere <laughs> and I love it. And when I actually meet other people like Liam and Leroy and uh, you know the rest, it's like I feel so belong. It's like you know you immediately click. You, you, we don't know each other like for a long time, but we click, you know. And it's electrifying. I like the passion whenever you know. It's it's, it's uh, rejuvenating and it's like letting you know that you know you're not alone. Yes, yeah, because the journey can be very lonely. What's your opinion on Arena's vision? We need more people like that in Singapore. You know, um, I think we need really, in, if you look at all the problems in the world today, not just Singapore and beyond its shores, I mean the reason why there are so many uh, disadvantaged and poor and disabled people out there in the world is because the world does not care enough. And I think for all that we've achieved, you know, um, going to the moon, sending rovers to Mars, uh, we can't even really feed um, our poor, we can't, we can't even help the, the most destitute society. So I think the human race, uh, I'm not very, very proud <laughs> to say I'm a human being. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we need more people like Arena out there and, uh, mm -hmm. who's got the vision, the, the smarts and and I guess the 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 heart to, to make this all happen. We call it a different breed. It's something that is you know, like totally... In fact, a friend is coming out with a book called mm -hmm. The Power of Unreasonable People. And yeah. we are... The power of unreasonable people are the social entrepreneurs. Oh, okay. <laughs> they look at a problem, a social problem, and they cannot but want to change it. Mm. They cannot just blend with it and become reasonable. Mm. And Leroy, Wilson and Arena are the ones that said, look, this is the gap. We must change it. Yeah. And she was so strong in her vision and in her passion that when you listen to her, it just knocks you over because she just wants to change the whole perspective of education. As comrades working for social causes, this informal network of social entrepreneurs enables Arena to tap on their business acumen, expertise and experiences. I think at the end of the day, it has to make financial sense. I mean, you are still running a business with a social cause. So you have to be very clear-minded all the time about um, how, you know, how, how you're going to reach uh, your break-in point, how you're going to sustain your business at the end of the day. That's, that's very important. I should yeah. try to add to that. Yeah, actually you should think of making big profits. Yes. Yeah. Because only with big profit, you are able to start more centres. It's about social innovations and social innovators. Okay. And people like Leroy and Suan and Arena, they are all social entrepreneurs. But the main thing is they need to make profit. Mm -hmm. And that's why Social Innovation Park comes in to not only educate, empower and enhance the abilities of social entrepreneurs. So it's almost like a platform, a centre, where a hub, where all of us gather mm -hmm. and then we network with each other. Yes. Uh, and Social Innovation Park also has global networks mm -hmm. that we go to and we meet people around the world. You yes. order the dinner. Yes. 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 Oh, the dinner is on you. We're not loose cannons, you know. We are very manageable people. <laughs> <laughs> and we have great empathy and a great passion to do something and each one of us have a different kind of uh, arena but the thing is that right we, we know what, we know when we talk we know, we know I know what you're talking about and it clicks you know if I were to ask you do you have any advice to give to aspiring social entrepreneurs here start doing something I, I think that's it to me it's, you just need to take a foot forward a lot of people say you want to do I want to do this it's, and you see that I don't know where to start just start it doesn't matter where you start when Arena started out on her social entrepreneurship, there was very little practical information she could draw on. Things are very different now, with more help made available. If you aspire to be a social entrepreneur, you may like to check out these organisations to find out more. I foresee uh, social entrepreneurship is will be a key component in nation bonding and nation building. Yes, if if um, and, and and if the social entrepreneurs rise as social leaders, and uh, it will actually run do a lot of good in the nation. The profile, the demographics is changing, and we cannot expect you know. And and now right, uh, the younger generation is even much different from us, and 
we, if we get that going right from the ground with support from the government and support from every sector or uh, even in the private sector like the MNCs and so on, uh, we are able to do a lot more. Yes, I think it's a matter of partnership. A potent mix of compassion, conviction, idealism and practicality is what differentiates a social entrepreneur like Arena from the rest of us. As an agent of social change, Arena has found herself evolving as a person, innovating as a businesswoman and doing her part as a citizen of the world. So what have you done, Lee? Are you game for social change? <laughs>